So just a quick forward before you watch this video, I've just played it back and noticed that I am quite wheezy and out of breath. It's perfectly normal. I am an asthma sufferer and this time of year my hay fever is at its its infancy, but uh, it does make me a little bit ill, as you can tell in this video. So bear with me, everything's good. Hi everyone and a very warm welcome. It's Lee here from Yorkshire AV again. And this is my second video. Today we're talking about perlis and subwoofers. We're talking about the new subwoofer grills. A little bit of information around the Kaleidoscape system, which we've installed here just in the last couple of days. And also now to go over our rack and look at the new amplification we've brought in from Primair. Got a lot of content to go through here. Hopefully this is interesting for you all. And this should conclude for today at least uh, the majority of our home cinema demonstration facility. Over the next couple of weeks, we have brought some updates into here already. I'll go over the fabric doll, which we've completed as well. And I'll talk to you about the ceiling, which we are doing after the Easter bank holiday weekend. Um, so again, there's an evolution taking place in here, but I thought I'd try and bring you on the journey and just go through what we're doing and why we're doing it. So in terms of what Kaleidoscape is, it is a digital movie playback platform where you own the content which is downloaded locally to a Terra server. The Terra server itself comes in uh, a number of different sizes. So we're running in store the six terabyte, which is the smallest server. And then there are sing you know, significant increments up to 18 terabytes, all the way up to 72 terabytes, which will cost in the region of about 30,000 pounds. So quite a considerable investment. Now, with the six terabyte, we're able to store approximately 82 full 4K UHD um, Blu-ray DVDs. And with that, the content is local. So Kaleidoscape is used extensively on things such as yachts, uh, where there's no you know, high-speed internet, where streaming would be nigh and impossible. Uh, but obviously in a home cinema environment where users are either using their own Blu-rays to catalog and then download from the store or buying movies as they're released. Um, that is all part of what Kaleidoscape is able to offer. Now, this is the screen that a lot of people will be familiar with. It's called the picture wall. And obviously within here, um, this is in alphabetical order um, as far as we've got um, Gravity, American Made up here. Edge of Tomorrow, so it starts with Aquaman, and then obviously it puts them in a fairly random order. And as you click into a video, you might see the screen pop around as we uh, as you move things around as it did in the background just there. Now, within the move within the picture screen itself, you can select your particular movie, uh, and obviously with that, it will tell you a little bit about it. Um, if we go down to the um, uh, the actual movie store. You can see who the director is, the cast, and with that you can then find, obviously, you know, other movies, and if you like a particular actor, see what else they've been in. Within extras, um, you can see if there's any available extras. So with Gravity, for example, one of my favorite films, uh, there are some supplements which you can download, and that gives you behind the scenes stuff. Um, and under more options, you can also see what scenes there are, and if you want to obviously manage the movie or remove the movie, you can do that all from within the actual GUI here itself. Um, you can add to collection, so watch soon or favorite. So if you've got things that you like to watch on a regular basis, that can actually be done. You can play the, sa uh, the trailer. Um, so if you just want to watch, you know, what's the movie about, get sitting down with the family or with friends, see if they're interested. The trailer's a good option. And then obviously you've got play scene. So these are scenes that the the Kaleidoscape movie team have pulled together, but you can also create your own scenes as well. So with that, if I just open up a particular movie sequence here, I'll turn the audio down just so it's not uh, taking over. So if we wanted to create a new scene, we can do so within the actual app. Um, and with that, we can go to scenes and we can Start that again. Within scenes, uh, we can create a, a new scene, as it were. So you'll see that new scene option just there. Start of new scene. So that's now started. And obviously, at the end of the new scene, we can press set end of new scene. And then we can save it. 
And if we just call this one test one, for example. Now, when we go back into that movie now, and what we should see is uh, a number of new scenes. So there it is, test one, five seconds long. That's really helpful if you want to create a number of sequences that you like showing off with your friends. Um, in the same way that we've actually got this installed here in store, so we've actually got a script that's created. So within the other screen, which is this one where we've got our favorites, new movies, movies that we've paused recently, scenes and scripts. So within here, we've got some of our favorite sequences. And basically with that, we're now able to basically have um, a bit of a, a talk over. So what are we gonna watch and why we're we gonna watch it and what you're expecting to see or hear. And then at the end of that particular um, element, it will then go straight into that scene, be it a cut down scene or the full scene. Um, and we can then jump into the next one, which is Edge of Tomorrow. After that one, we go to Hans Zimmer, Live in Prague. After that one, we go to No Time to Die. After that one, we go to La La Land, and so on and so forth, until you get to the end of the actual demo sequences. Um, so that, that's quite handy if you just want to showcase your system and you've got favorite scenes that you like showcasing. Um, and as you've seen, we're downloading a lot of the, the movies that I've recently catalogued. And obviously with that, very, very soon, we'll be able to um, showcase more of our favorite clips. On the left here, we've got the Terra 6 terabyte, and on the right, we've got the Strato C, which is the individual player. On the back, on the player, you'll see the HDMI ports and digital outputs, USB network and power, and on the back of the Terra server itself, just network, USB, and power. And as I'm about to cover in just a second, we've got the whole rack mount kit here. This is before the OCD plate that hides both of the devices together. Um, and here with an optional, it's not a Kaleidoscape product, it's a third party approved product. But this allows basically for cataloging your own Blu-ray collection um, into the Kaleidoscape platform, something which I'm about to cover in a little bit of detail in terms of what the benefits are and what that gives you. And now over to the rack where you'll see obviously the Kaleidoscape's platform now installed with the OCD plate. Um, hiding all of the, the cables and accessories and uh, it looking really pretty. So onto the cataloging then. So well, with the disk now exited, you'll see within the actual local library playback, you'll see the device, the actual films themselves are now cataloged and click on each one will give you information about that particular film. Now go to your Kaleidoscape uh, website, go to manage and click on disk to digital offers. Um, and this will now show you what it will cost you to convert your catalogued media to an actual download within the Kaleidoscape platform. And you'll notice that these are quite heavily discounted down, in some cases down to $4, sometimes more expensive, depends on the picture house that's looking after them. And now you can see, obviously, the download situation. So I've got quite a lot of downloads that are now waiting. Uh, our 100 meg internet here in store is quite slow, so it'll take some time to get those all categorized. So the burning question is, what's in your Rackly? At the very, very top of the rack, we've got the processor. It's a Lingdorf MP60 2.1, which is taking care of all the video and audio processing. It's a 16 channel, each channel discreetly managed with up to four subwoofers via LFE or stereo subs. 8K, 4K 160, oh, 4K 120, HDMI 2.1. I've then got three Primair A35.8 power amplifiers with the top one looking after my LCR, the middle amplifier looking after my side surrounds and my rear surrounds, and the bottom amplifier here looking after my six height channels and giving me connectivity for my wides. From a sources point of view, I've got the Zapiti reference media player. I've got a Zapiti NAS in the back of the rack as well. We've got a Revon X110 UHD player, and we've got the Kaleidoscape, which you saw earlier on in the video. The Primair A35.8 is the most powerful amplifier from Primair. It features 1500 watts of total output in a fully bridged biamp stereo configuration into eight ohms. Um, in total, uh, we're running three of these amplifiers in a combination of bridged and obviously standard configuration.
Okay, on to the A35 for date. So I'm running three of these in my rack, as you've seen. The first one is powering my left, center, and right. Now you'll notice first and foremost that the amplifier at the back has got, you know, in total eight channels, A35.8. And with that, we've got XLR, and we've also got the single-ended RCA connections. And you'll also notice some little toggles, which obviously tell you, you know, which are you using, RCA or XLR. In our case, we will be using XLR, so the toggle will be down. And then you've also got this, this extra mode, which is then how are you using the power amplifier? One being bridged, two being two channel, i.e. individual stereo channels, and three being bridged with a 6 dB gain. So eight RCAs and eight XLRs. Now our front first amplifier, we're running in bridge mode for our left, center, and right speakers. Now with that, we're using, for all intents and purposes, a single XLR uh, into each of the actual amplified ports. And with that, you know, you'll notice that the um, the fourth the fourth pair of channels seven and eight are unused. So make sure that we've got mode one set to bridged. And that basically means if you look at the speaker bridge ports down below, that we're going to use speaker positive from channel two and speaker negative from channel one. And that's the same for all of the other uh, channels that we use in bridge mode. You'll also note that the actual interface that we're going to plug into, either via single-ended XLR or RCA, is identified. So bridged input for channel one and two is two, three and four is four, five and six is obviously six. So with that, um, that's how we've got our front end wired up. We're not by amp, well, we are by amping, but we're not by wiring. Channel seven and eight are effectively spare. Now I could use those for other channels, um, but for, for, for now, I want to keep as much power, as much overhead in the actual main amplifier as is possible. So the second amplifier, the second amplifier is powering my LC, uh, my surrounds and my rear surrounds. Now, how I got that wired up is again, relatively straightforward. Um, what we've got is four bridged outputs. So channel one and two, three and four, five and six, seven and eight. Left surround, right surround, left rear surround and right rear surround. Same ports as last time, channel two, four, six and eight this time as XLR, making sure we've got bridge mode enabled. And that obviously tells the amplifier how we're operating and how things are wired up again, just using you know the actual terminals that are marked as speaker bridged for each of those. And the third amplifier um, is simply powering my overheads, my six channel Atmos. I'm technically running a 7.2.6, uh, but I have the option of running 9.2.6 if required. So in this case here, I'm gonna be running in normal two channel mode. So I'm not bridging. And subsequently I've got, you know, channel one to six in use with channel seven and eight effectively spare. And I would likely use those for my wides if I ever wanted to. So make sure that you've got in this configuration two for stereo and obviously again, XLR RCA and use your normal class one wiring, uh, class two right wiring, sorry, out to your speakers. So now let's take a little look at Perlison audio subwoofers. Uh, first and foremost, we'll have a look at what we've got in store, and then let's take a look at the, the fuller range and some of their specs that are available to us online. Now in terms of the video for today, we talked about bringing some of the Perlison subwoofers into the mix, and here we have them. So we've got here the, the D12, we've got the R210, the R212, and the big one, currently in the right hand side, squashed up against the wall, is the D215. Now, the numbers, as I think we've talked about previously, two in front of the driver size indicates dual. So with the D210, 212, and 215, um, you've obviously got uh, a push-pull configuration. These are effectively sealed as far as the drive units are concerned. They're an up-firing and a forward-firing driver, and they're mechanically out of phase. 
And just to give you a bit more perspective in terms of the, I guess, the depth of some of these subwoofers, uh, we've got the D12 here close to us. And if I just move the camera around a little bit, you can see the height and hopefully the thickness, the depth of the subwoofer here is uh, increasing. I've got the baffles all pretty much lined up here. Um, so you can see that these are quite considerably deeper at the back, which is the D215. And obviously we've got the R series in the center there, the R210 closest to us and the R212. Now with all Perlis and subwoofers, you'll find the same aesthetics at the front end. And that is obviously the carbon fiber driver set within a pretty substantial baffle. And what they've now released as well are these beautiful grills. Now these are not included as standard. You have to buy the grill separately. The grills are retailing for about 150 pounds for the smallest for the D12 up to about 220 pounds, I believe for the D215. They are magnetic. So in terms of the operation, they can be pulled off. They are beautifully made. They feel like they are maybe MDF or a plastic polymer. Difficult to tell without cutting one open. You've got the magnets which align towards the actual, the press studs or the, the fixings on the front of the baffle and obviously the sub. Grill attaches like so. Very simple, very straightforward but also very easy. So you get the same front end baffle, you get the same driver weave, um, you obviously get slightly different power outputs between the D series and the R series. So I'll flick up here the, the different outputs and what that all means. Let's start with the, um, the single subwoofers, the single sealed box design, the D12 and the D15. You'll notice the D12 has a 1.5 kilowatt short-term amplifier peak, and the D15 has a 2 kilowatt peak short-term. Um, across the seal box design, you'll see obviously it's an acoustic suspension alignment. Um, all of the subwoofers feature a 2.4 inch LCD, I'll show that in just a second, and all have a fantastic app as far as iOS and Android is concerned, which allows you to control the 10 band parametric EQs, it allows you to change trim, the EQ mode, um, everything you can do on the touch panel and more available on the app itself. And again, they all feature a 32-bit ARM Cortex-M4 uh, processor. Again, when you look at the DSP engine, again, you'll see it's TI DSP, it's 48-bit data paths, and again, driver complement or driver size. D12 is a 300 millimeter carbon fiber diaphragm, it's give or take 30 mil linear excursion, uh, and that's the same excursion factor on the D15, but obviously it's a 380 millimeter uh, diaphragm on the D15. Then we look at the D212 and the 215. The 215 is what I've got physically in store at the minute. The D212 we've had and we've moved those on. Again, this time it's a push pull design, so uh, an actual. Uh, sealed box design with a up firing and a forward firing driver. You'll notice that both the D215 and the T212 feature a three kilowatt short term power output. So quite a, a step up from the standard single drivers. Um, you'll notice as well that again, it's a 30 mil extrusion uh, excursion driver and 300 millimeter carbon fiber, two of and two of 380 millimeters within D215. When you look at the R series, uh, a little bit less in overall power, both the R212 and the R210 feature a 1.3 kilowatt short term peak output. Um, and again, this time it's only a 20 millimeter linear excursion. It's worth noting if you scroll down towards the uh, towards the bottom of the uh, Perlis and Audio page, the certification to achieve Dominus rating uh, you need two of the R212s. For THX Ultra, you just need a single. On the R210, you need four of those subwoofers to attain THX Dominus certification in room. 
and the gain THX Ultra. You only need one of them. Um, weight is also a, a considerable factor. The R series um, from a push pull, the 10 inch driver is 40, uh, 44 kilos with a, with a 12 inch driver coming in at 48.2. Compare that to the D series with the D212 at 68 kilos and the D215 at 92. You do need to consider how you're going to get the subwoofers into position. Something which uh, you know you you would come to Yorkshire AV for in terms of helping get your subwoofers delivered safely, set up in position, and obviously with that we'll break our backs and hopefully not break yours. Um, all of the subwoofers, as you'll see in my next little video, feature XLR and RCA inputs. Um, and the other thing to note is the crossover uh, the frequency response range um, again look at the C box first and foremost the D12 in the uh, the THX EQ 20 Hertz to 289 in the large room 16 Hertz to 289 I'm only going to focus on those two as that's where 99% of people will likely run these subs the D15 16 to 320 Hertz it's got a slightly wider band of operation and third 20 hertz to 320 hertz in THX mode. The D series 212, a little bit more grunt overall, so you're in 15 hertz as opposed to 16, all the way through to 231, and 20 hertz to 231 in THX. 15 hertz to 200 hertz on the D215 with 2200 on THX. When you compare the R series in, comp you know, as far as their output, you'd be hard not to look at these in, in a lot more serious matter. 16 to 256 in large room and 20 to 256 in THX mode. So they do compete quite well in terms of frequency response to the D series, but obviously you do need more of them to achieve the overall high speed pressure level with low distortion figures that Ferlison claim in their collateral some of wise the rear plate is very consistent from device to device starting at the top you've got a service usb port your 3 to 12 volt trigger you've got a pair of rcas which are obviously input and out, uh, output uh, allowing for daisy chain and that's the same for the xlr connections here as well stereo left one and right two and then you've got your outputs as well. Again, if you only got a two-channel amplifier and maybe a four-channel uh, subwoofer setup, you can daisy chain. Towards the bottom, you've got your power connect, uh, your power connection. It's an IEC C13, and obviously make sure the voltage rating is for your local supply, as well as any certifications, and obviously the model number. And it's a, a really, really beautiful brush plate design here as well, which, like I say, is consistent between both the D and the R series. Now in terms of the touchscreen module itself, this will go to sleep if it's not been touched for a couple of minutes, or it should do. And within here you've got your audio menu, setup menu, status, and you can generate a test tone as well. So here, within the audio menu, we can look at the master level. So you've got this pulled back by 2dB because it's rather large. You've got your level trim, if you're trimming at all. And then you've got your EQ mode. So within here you can set your small room, large room, and THX EQ mode. And what this does is you end up with a boost below effectively 20 hertz. So within THX it's quite a gentle curve up. It sort of comes in at 24, 25 hertz. Um, with the, the small room EQ, a little bit more. And obviously with the large room it's even more. You saw sort of a, a fairly steep curve up from maybe 12 to 13 hertz and really live at 16 hertz. That's within the EQ mode itself. You've then got your setup menu. So which inputs are we using here? We're using RCA1. Are we using a trigger, yes or no? And you can actually set these on here based on which inputs you are effectively using. And you'll see it changes all the modes appropriately as you go through the plus and minus. LCD backlight, so how bright do you want this to be? your information around the sub itself in terms of what firmware version and then you've got your status so in this case the amplifier is turned off got no active signal 
and the Bluetooth is disconnected from the actual, um, from the app itself as well. If I go to test tone and I generate this, you'll now see the amplifier change status. And as such, the amplifier and the test tone was on and now the amplifier is still hot and active and the test tone is now finished. So you may recall in the last video, I talked about some of the updates that were coming into the cinema room and one of them was going to be effectively covering the door in fabric, which we've now completed. So Michael, who's my head of installation, and I, we spent some time a couple of weeks ago uh, just basically retrimming the actual room itself and looking at what we could do in here to make things aesthetically prettier as far as the fabric's concerned. So what you'll notice in here first and foremost is we've got our LAN system. It's an on-wall touchscreen module with an 8-inch display. And from within here, I can control the lighting in the room. We've got a number of different scenes which we can port call upon. And we've got RGB control. I can also control the media platform as well. So with that, I can control my sources, my volume, my amplification, and the projector output as well. And that's all completely sunk into the actual fabric itself. Now we're using the Cinema Build Systems fabric platform. Uh, very, very easy to use. Um, fabricing itself is not the easiest thing in the world, getting the tension completely right and you'll always see things that you want to keep on adjusting, uh, but ultimately you have to find a place where you're happy and where the finish is, is you know, not just adequate, but, you know, but, but, but more than good enough. And that's where we've now got to with the fabric in this particular room. Now, if I have a look at the door, the door's quite interesting. What you'll notice is we've got a, uh, a big panel effectively from the side of the LED trim, which is here on the left hand side. So from here all the way to the other side of the door is a single piece of fabric. There's no joint in here whatsoever. So aesthetically, it's very, very pretty. Was a bit of a headache getting the fabric perfect, but we are perfectionists when it comes to this stuff. And then obviously we've got the door itself. So if I open the door slightly, you'll see solid oak door. We've got the trim itself here. Now what we can do if you are so interested, we're using black fabric with black trim, it's not so much of a problem. But if you've got a different color or a lighter color, you can actually wrap the side of this fabric trim as well so you don't see the shiny black here whatsoever. Uh, these are things that you can also do. The, um, the actual handle itself is spaced out by the depth of the actual track itself and subsequently that allows us to, to still have the handle front of the fabric without it pulling the fabric in. And then behind the fabric we've got our acoustic control which means that we've got first point of reflection management within here as well. And all being well, you know, we've got a really, really tight fitting here against the door stops. Subsequently there's no rattling from here whatsoever. And the other piece which we're really happy with actually is the, um, the crease or the lack of the crease uh, as far as the hinging is concerned. So what you'll notice is that we've got a single piece of fabric that comes all the way across to a piece of trim and then the fabric comes out of this trim to the other side of the door casing and subsequently that allows us to have a very, very, very clean look as far as the fabric is concerned, especially up in the corner where you'll see up here, you know, there's absolutely no crease whatsoever. And as we open that door, you'll see the fabric just starts to rubble up, which is fine. And then as the door is closed, the fabric becomes completely flat. And when we're seeing the actual projection screen, we're incredibly happy with the lack of light, the light absorption now, immediately left and right of the screen itself. And to give you an idea now what that looks like. Got a significant number of subwoofers out here at this moment in time for the rest of the video. But you can see from an aesthetics point of view, it's now super, super clean and gives the room a real nice aesthetic, especially when the, the main lights are off. And we'll try and get some scenes shortly as far as what does it look like as far as the all black is concerned. And now for something a little different, just to, I guess, give a bit of a sneak 
preview into what's coming up in other videos um, over the next couple of months. So a couple of shots here from within my two channel demonstration facility where we've got a, a wide range of beautiful speakers from Dali, Monitor Audio, Klipsch, Elac, Serum Swift, MoFi and a few others out there. We've got electronics from Cyrus, from Luxman, Hi-Fi Rose, Project Audio, Roxanne Audio Lab, to name but a few. And I'm hoping to do a couple of unboxing videos, some shorter videos, a bit more product orientated um, over the coming weeks and get my apprentice Jensen involved in some of this as well. And we'll also be doing a little bit of a, a deep dive as far as the installation products are concerned, be them on wall, in wall, in ceiling products and little installation amplifiers, cabling hint, hints and tips and uh, and generally taking a look at the, the whole world of two, two channel audio, be it analog, digital streaming, rune, which is a very popular topic here in store. So yeah, stay tuned for uh, a much wider variety of videos up and coming from Yorkshire AV.